God, that was, uh, right, hello everybody, how are you? Um, my name's Martin Williams, um, I'm the SEO manager for um, uh, AO.com, and for the next 20 minutes I'm going to talk to you about how we learn more from our failures and from our successes. Um, and I'm going to try and talk to you about uh, four questions. So the first question is, what happens if you move from one domain to another and you get it wrong? What happens when you, uh, everybody from your SEO team leaves? What happens if you lose your best content? And what happens if you muck around with your mega menu? Has that happened to anybody in the, uh, in, in the thing? Um, well, uh, let me tell you first, before we start, uh, why I'm here and why I'm standing up here. Uh, I love coming to, come to conferences, uh, and I love hearing from agencies about how wonderful they are, and I love hearing about multinational corporations, but I'd quite like to hear from you guys, from people in the north, for, from uh, the in-house, the clients, and tell us about your experiences. So I said that to the Benchmark Search Conference uh, last year, and they said, well, why don't you um, uh, actually kind of come up and stand and do a presentation? And even though I've never done a, a presentation to a conference before, I said, all right, I will. And uh, so that's why I'm standing here, bricking it, um, hoping that you'll be nice to me. OK, so uh, before we go on to those four questions, um, a little show of hands. Has anybody, does anybody know about AO.com? Uh, yeah, quite a few of you. Uh, keep your hands up if you've actually bought anything from us. Oh, brilliant, excellent. Uh, yeah, two people who actually work for, um, for AO.com kept their hands up, which is nice to know on there. So I'm just going to uh, put a short video on here uh, about AO. Uh, without uh, the sound, but you can see it. AO.com has just floated on the stock exchange. Hopefully you'll know about all about AO.com now, um, and uh, unfortunately that's uh, it all goes downhill from here because uh, that's the razzmatazz finished, and uh, and it's pretty much the PowerPoint presentation slides uh, done by me for the next uh, 13 slides. So I hope you'll like the content rather than the actual presentation. Uh, so uh, going to ask you a question here. Um, is, does anybody have this fear, because I have this fear, that you'll go into work one day and you'll find that Google has just trashed all your rankings? Put your hands up if you, you've got that fear. A, a lot less than I thought there would be. I thought everybody would put their hands up there. Uh, well, that happened to AO uh, back in 2013. We were moving from appliancesonline.co.uk to AO.com. Um, just before that, we got hit by a penalty. Uh, and the website we were moving to, AO.com, uh, wasn't actually cleaned properly. It had lots of irrelevant links. It had lots of, frankly, dodgy links in there. Um, and our visibility fell from 20,000 to uh, zero overnight. We got trashed, basically. Um, we lost millions. Uh, it took us three years to actually recover. Uh, we had to do a lot of technical work to actually make sure the site was okay. Uh, we did a lot of building links and building credibility of what is, was essentially a new site. Uh, and then in September 2016, lovely old Penguin 4.0 came along and uh, got us back to the actual rankings on there. Um, so from that debacle, how did that make us stronger? Well, if you want to increase the visibility of SEO in your company, a very good way is to trash your rankings. Uh, we found it very effective. <laughs> Uh, if you want to have a monthly meeting with your CEO to tell you, 
Tell him what you did that month to get his rankings back. Uh, follow this particular course of action. Um, probably on a more positive note, uh, it meant that we just had to be better at SEO than anybody else just to catch up, because we were, we were 20,000, 30,000 behind everybody else. Uh, what that meant was that we had very high levels of spend and IT resource on the technical SEO side of things. We became very good at building white hat links. Um, and uh, some of the stuff we did back in 2015 is evergreen content and still brings us links. It's very good stuff. Uh, we also built a content capability, um, which in 2013, 2014 was not very well widely done on that one. Uh, we had a content team who uh, looked at in-market content pages, and we've got 251 of those pages now. Um, and those cover best pages, tips and tricks, buying guides. And we had a lifestyle content team uh, who develop over 150 lifestyle pages uh, and for the out-of-market customers. So We've got in-market and out-of-market. We basically became very good at what Google wants from a website. Uh, so um, one of the positive things about um, trashing your rankings that you, is that you have to become very good at SEO. So um, my advice to you guys, if you want to move domains, the first advice is try and um, dissuade whoever wants to move domains to do it, because it's very, very risky. Um, and then if they really, really want to do it, stop everything else and do this and make sure you do it right, because this particular thing could be um, career-making or career-breaking uh, from that point of view. I would then make a checklist of all the things you need to do, uh, then start talking to everybody else in the business about that checklist, particularly the IT team, the IT infra infrastructure team, um, and make sure everybody knows how important it is and how they have to do it right, or uh, it could be SEO Armageddon. I just thought of that. That's not even in the uh, uh, my things. Uh, the, uh, so make sure that everybody knows in-house and also get outside help because you'll have a checklist. You'll be adding it to it, to it from other people in the, within the business. But an agency can actually will probably add further things in you haven't thought of. And to be brutally frank, um, it gives you somebody to blame if it goes wrong. So uh, useful things to have there. So. Hopefully that answers the first question. The second question, what happens uh, when everybody in the SEO team leaves? Uh, that's me on the left, looking happy. They've got three people there doing wonderful SEO-y type things that you do. Uh, and then it was just me, looking very unhappy. Um, so what we did, the answer we decided, uh, was the, these wonderful people here, who are the paid search team. Um, and what we did is that we turned the page search team into SEO experts. Um, the first thing we did was we asked for them. Uh, hopefully, you can see from the video that we think we're a slightly different company. Uh, it's about being bold. It's about being smart and wanting to do things. And they were up for it, which is great news from our point of view. We instigated a three-stage training program. Uh, we did initial keyword position and question analysis. Then we looked at advanced SEO tools, advanced analysis, looking at feature snippet analysis, link analysis, all that kind of thing. Uh, we started them doing some uh, analysis on sectors on, on particular areas of the site. And then once they got happy with the analysis, we started looking at how to optimize the site from the mega menu all the way down to the product pages and the content pages. Uh, because we've got two lots of work coming into one team now, we had to have a way of controlling that. So we've got paid search um, uh, information coming in and SEO kind of um, uh, workloads coming in. So we used um, two weekly sprints, we used Trello boards, and we used daily-ish stand-ups to actually kind of like, uh, to get that to work. And I think it worked pretty, pretty well. It worked very well. Uh, and... This is how it made us stronger. We've now got a team of multi-schooled uh, search people who can do um, SEO and paid search. Now, there'll be some, some of you guys out in the audience who say, well, you're looking at the paid search and SEO people because there's one of, us, one of me and I do everything. So what you can learn from this particular one is that if you get the... Uh, you can look at a page from an optimization from the SEO point of view, but look at it as well from the paid search point of view. We found that um, 
we had the analysis from, uh, for both paid search and optimization, um, SEO optimization at the same time, and that gave us greater influence over IT and company developments. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys have this particular um, issue, but uh, I can go to the IT people and say, um, well, if we do this, we might increase rankings, and that might increase income. Um, if you've got the paid search team in there that says, well, we spend a rook of money, we spend a rook of money sending people to this page. If we optimize this page, we can save 10% of those costs and put them to the bottom line. All of a sudden, that's a much better, greater argument, and uh, the senior management uh, tend to uh, sit up and take notice. You also get a much more engaged search, uh, search team, and it allowed us, it gave us capacity, basically. We had a lot more people who could do paid search and SEO at the same time, so it allowed us to go to different parts of uh, the AO world, because AO.com has got other uh, businesses as well, and start helping them. Um, so I would say give it a go. Uh, you need a very, very good, talented team. Uh, and before I came here, I said uh, they pleaded with me not to bring them up on stage. So I won't bring them up on stage, but there's two of them sitting over there, Melissa and Anthony. Would you stand up for a second, and can you give them a round of applause for being such a wonderful <laughs> paid search team? Thank you very much. They will kill me for doing that, so, uh, so there you go. Um, so that's the second question. Third question is, what if you lose your best content? Now, this happened in March. This happened to one of our, um, uh, an AO World company, uh, who decided to move their content hub, and they didn't tell anybody. Um, there you go. That's what happens if you move your content hub and didn't tell anybody. About a month later, they, they came in to ask me what, uh, what I thought had gone wrong because the, uh, the actual organic search um, sales were dropping. And I pretty much said, where's your content hub gone? And they said, oh, we moved it. And I went, oh, OK. And so the, uh, we did what we normally do, which would be uh, we, we 301 redirected. We re-indexed the pages. We updated the links on the site. This is what you should have done beforehand but it did affect um, visibility. So uh, just as that was a, a, as actually recovering, we started seeing the e-commerce pages um, losing vis in visibility. And so we dropped the, uh, you probably can't see these numbers, I don't think, we dropped the, uh, the visibility on the content hub, dropped by about 74%, but that actually can lament a 20% drop in the visibility of the e-commerce pages that we had there. So what does that tell us in terms of um, uh, how did that make us stronger? Um, well, basically, we know how much, how valuable the content hub is now. And you, know, you guys probably kind of have uh, people coming to you and going, well, we spend all this time on content hubs, but you don't really know what the value is. Uh, you can use these slides to actually say, well, this gives you an indication of the value, or you can turn the content hub off like we did and see how, how that affects it. Um, but uh, on a serious note, we were looking at these pages and thinking, these are getting huge amounts of volume for us, but very little income. We couldn't see any income at all coming through. Should we be doing less of them? Uh, now, because we've done this, we're thinking, well, actually, we should probably be doing more of them because they're making such a boost to the, the visibility of the e-commerce pages. We'll probably do that. Um, luckily enough, uh, this kind of is a lesson to, another lesson to the company, and nobody moves, moves moves pages now without talking to a wider audience, um, including me. And I, there was a big learning from me here because uh, I spent a lot of time focusing on education about SEO, um, uh, which we, talked, we heard about in the previous um, uh, presentation, just about AO.com. And I didn't really kind of like give any education at all to the wider AO world um, uh, uh, website. So I had to increase that and actually kind of widen out the actual um, uh, the SEO visibility of, um, uh, of what people should be doing. So that's the third area. So um, the fourth one is just about what happens when you muck around with the mega menu. Um, I don't know if anybody's mucked around with the mega menu, uh, but in May we added URL tracking to the mega menu. Now, I know some of your technical people out there will be going, just kind of sucking through your teeth and shaking your head and going, oh, God, this. But uh, we know that there's better thing, ways to do it than that. But given the time constraints, uh, we put URL tracking, some parameter tracking on the, uh, the mega menu because uh, we wanted to know how it actually worked. Uh, and we did everything right within those constraints. We made sure the canonicalization was right. We put parameters on Google Search Console and Bing Webmaster. Um, 
but it still actually had a 5 to 10% fall in the, the visibility of those tracked pages that were on the mega menu. And um, it took us about four to six weeks to get it right on track. So even though we've not made any changes to the actual links themselves, we've just put parameters onto the end of it, it was a 5 to 10% fall in visibility that we, kind of like, we had to kind of like pull back in, in six weeks. So that's what it looks like kind of in terms of um, the month-on-month -month change. So how did that make us stronger? Um, we started to think, okay, we know how, how important the mega menu is for SEO, for the visibility, but, but just doing that little change, making that effect, um, means that we can actually make it into a much stronger tool for us. And so we built a better control of the mega menu. It was in, largely in the hands of the IT team, and so we had to ask every time, every time we actually wanted to, to make changes. But now we've got a self-serve tool. We can make changes whenever we want. Um, we reviewed the mega menu um, for links which didn't contribute to UX or to SEO. Uh, if you look at your own mega menus, there's probably links in there that, that for, you've put in for all sorts of different reasons, which is the same for, for AO.com. So we've tried to take a lot of those out, and so we're focusing this great mega menu juice, if you like, uh, onto a lesser number of, um, of links. And we're also beginning to test on what should be in the mega menu. Like we've got these merchandise pods at the bottom. Do we actually, should we include those? Should we change those around? Do we take some of the... Um, sections in the second level nav and put it onto the first level nav. Uh, what will happen if we do that? Uh, so it's this kind of like mini failure has given us a great idea for, for potential um, expansion in the future. So we've had four failures and that has helped, actually helped us get stronger. The key takeaways I would um, suggest you might take away from this presentation is that Changing domains on a website is probably one, could be one of the most important things you do. So do it right, give it a huge amount of your attention, um, uh, and uh, make checklists, uh, as we all do. Uh, second part is bringing paid search and uh, the SEO teams together can give you benefits to the company and benefits to SEO. And even if you haven't got that kind of structure, when you're doing uh, looking at a page and optimizing for SEO, optimize it for paid search as well, and you'll get um, a double whammy. Content hubs, uh, we found, are important to the rankings, even if they bring little, little direct income to the actual website. And your mega menu can be a huge tool to help boost rankings and change the way that uh, customers navigate the site. And those are my four things, and thank you very much.